Well, the outbreak of the new coronavirus in China this January saw patients suffer things like fever, cough, shortness of breath, and even severe pneumonia. But these are symptoms which could be caused by other diseases. How do we test for a virus that we haven't seen before? You may have heard this term a lot recently: nucleic acid test. What you can tell from this name, what is test is whether the genetic material, RNA or DNA of a virus is present. Scientists will first take a sample from a patient, usually a throat swab, to test for coronavirus. But now we know the genetic material of this new coronavirus is RNA. But most of our tools for this test are specific to DNA, so scientists need to take virus RNA as the template, create a complementary strand, and to make a DNA copy of it. It's a process called reverse transcription. Transcription is the copying of the DNA into RNA, and we did the opposite, hence the name. Now we have a mass of DNA fragments from everything in a sample. Patients' own cells, harmless bacteria, and so on. How do we find the coronavirus? Scientists in China sequenced the virus genome and made it available to the world on January the 10th. This means we know the entire RNA sequence of new coronavirus. It allows us to compare it with other virus strains in this family and find what's unique. In other words, what is this distinctive signature? If this signature can be found in the sample, that means the virus exists. But how is this done? Scientists will copy small pieces from this distinctive fragment of DNA, what they called primers. They then heat up the sample to separate the strands of all DNA inside. If there are any traces of the new coronavirus, the primer will grab onto it and start to make copies. One DNA becomes two. Two becomes four, until there are billions of copies. To make this process easier to observe, scientists add fluorescent labels to the primers, meaning the more viral bits there are, the brighter it glows, telling scientists that virus exists. One problem is the test can trip up over small errors. Primers can grab onto a piece of DNA in the wrong way, or be led astray by contamination from the previous sample. Or the throat swab may not contain enough virus. All this could lead to a wrong result. Chinese scientists say in practice, just 30% to 50% of the infected patients will test positive. On top of this, testing on the highly infectious coronavirus needs to be undertaken in a lab with high biosafety levels, usually within the country's disease control authority. There are four levels. Only labs with protection level three and level four are allowed to test such virus, but we don't have many of these labs available. That's why testing has been relatively slow, especially during the outbreak. China has announced that CT screening of lungs would now be part of the standard diagnosis process, along with nucleic acid test. This serves as a double check in case the test fails. It's a new process. The more we know about this virus, the faster we can track it down.